A fence and closed signs now surround Ballard Commons Park. Calls from neighbors demanding the city clear out this encampment are finally being answered. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Joyce Taylor. And I'm Mark Wright. Good evening. So this morning, the final tenants were moved out and the city relocated the last person living in the park. King 5 Sebastian Robertson is live there tonight and spoke with neighbors nearby. So Sebastian, they say this has been a long time coming, right? Yeah, and that's what organizers say, too, that even though the cleanup happened very quickly, it was a long time in the making. You can see the fences are up, the park is closed, and as of this moment, we don't know when it'll be back open. Early Tuesday morning, under the hum of heavy equipment. It's a no-win situation, but maybe this will help. Ballard Commons Park is systematically clear. Parking enforcement alongside the parks department, all working in unison. I feel bad about the whole thing, and, and I'm not into politics or anything, but it seems like there's money going to a lot of sports and stuff instead of helping people get by. For months, neighbors and businesses in the area voicing their frustrations, calling the temporary homeless camp a safety issue and a hot spot for crime. It's just a cycle of, of stress and anxiety that none of us need. Tuesday's cleanup is a day many have been pushing for. This is a start, a really critical start. Without shelter, without sustenance, without security, people die. Reverend Britt Olson's church borders the park and for decades has served hot meals daily to anyone in need. She sees this as progress, at least the beginning. Some people I've been knowing for many, many years have shelter for the first time in years and we just need to continue to increase that. According to Olson, 60 people once living in the tents, many of which she knows personally, are now in temporary shelters. Those who refused housing left with no option but to set up camp somewhere else. We've been working for a long time to try and ensure that the resources that need to be put into helping people get the help they need actually happen this time. And unlike uh, other cleanups that we've seen, SPD did not have a large visible presence here. We are told there were a handful of units from the crisis and mobilization team. In Seattle, Sebastian Robertson, King 5 News.